morning. My name is Olivia Blanco. I am the sister of Felipe Blanco, and this is my nephew, Andrew Feng Lu. We're coming to you from Sybil's Kitchen, and uh, today we're making the Jamaican fried dumpling. To the Americans, it might look like a biscuit, but here's our recipe. Okay, what we have here is five cups of flour, and it's self-rising flour, but I like to add a little bit of bacon powder to it just to make it a little more fluffy. And I am just eyeing it, um, maybe about a half a teaspoon. Okay. Then I add some salt. Salt brings out the flavor in your food, so you add a little bit. If you don't, it will be a little bit bland. So, so I it think brings... you're putting that into your hand. So that's equivalent to what, a, a teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> so that looks roughly about a, a teaspoon. Okay. A teaspoon. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. Yes. So, the ham, teaspoon. Yes. Okay. And then, we're going to add some sugar. Half a teaspoon? Uh, no. Okay. What, what is in here? Uh, a half sugar. a cup? That's a cup. A cup? Yeah. Half a cup. Half a cup? Yeah. Okay. And I like mine sweet, but you can measure according to your taste. And then, I'll have some butter. So I have seen people use mayonnaise. So what's the difference between mayonnaise and butter? Mayonnaise is made with eggs, so mm -hmm. it adds the fluffiness to the recipe as mm -hmm. well as the butter. Uh, it has oil, so it can replace the butter. Okay. So you get both using the mayonnaise. And Sybil has a great recipe for that with that. Okay. Now you just add enough butter to make it flaky. Butter oh, adds a flakiness to the that's dough. That's equivalent to a quarter tea, a quarter quarter, a quarter um a quarter spoon. I think you could get four in this. So right. okay. Yeah, use a quarter for the first batch and a quarter for the second batch. Okay. Okay. So now get all those ingredients mixed in here. Then we're gonna use a combination of milk and water as your binding agent. Right. Wait, 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 before you throw that in there. We have to measure. Uh, we have to measure because, you know, you want the right consistency. Oh. So, in Silver's Kitchen, we have measuring cup. Oh. Okay. So, let's start with... So, We're that's... Gonna a, use a cup that's of really, Okay, so basically... A cup of... Well, we're well, going to add as we need it. But initially, the milk it did about six uh, six ounces or three, three quarter quarters. Three quarters and a quarter cup of water. Quarter. There you go. And okay. we're just gonna mix it in until we have the right consistency to the dough, and that is uh, not quite sticky, but enough to knead. So with this, can we use buttermilk or can we use regular milk or whole milk or two percent, one percent? Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter because it's just a banding agency for the, okay. for the flour. Yeah. You could use plain water. Mm. Okay. See, this is how far a cup gets you. So. I'm gonna need more than that, man. Yeah. So you start kneading with the spoon because right now it's going to be sticky on your hands until we. Okay, so that's two thirds, and let's get some water. My sous chef. And to really feel the consistency of a dough, you really need to use your hands. And to also break up the butter into the dough. All right, so. I don't think you're going to need two cups, but. So this is another cup. So okay, just, just, just pour some a little bit at a time because you don't want to put too much. Okay. So give me a reference point of like uh, some sort of consistency, like when you like, is a pancake batter mix or? No, it's like a uh, bread dough. Bread dough? Okay. Or, yeah. Because remember, it's similar to a biscuit. Okay. So, 
the longer you knead, mm -hmm. is the tighter the dumpling or the looser the dumpling? I think the tighter. I like mine, like, you have to put your jaw muscles into it. Okay, so you we'll knead it. We'll give so, it a good knead. Okay. Now, every now and then, I look at my wife and she like, kneads her dough in such a way that she can take two spoons and make a dumpling. Oh, that's maybe a professional. No, that, <laughs> but it's so like, you know, when you bite into it, um, it just disappears in your mouth. Oh. There's no chewiness to it. Oh, okay. So. That's more like the biscuit consistency, a little bit. Oops. I've been kneading now for about 10 minutes and we've reached somewhat the consistency that we want. You notice here it's, you can really, no, we don't want any. No, no, but in, in terms, basically five cups of flour equal about, uh, we put about a cup and a half in total of liquid, wet liquid with the, cons the milk and water consistency. Uh, into that and it seems like you know you kind of know when you need it is done because your fingers now from when you started it was all covered in <laughs> dough now your hands are clean and um, if it gets a little too sticky you can just sprinkle a little flour on it to bring it back where you can really manipulate it without it being sticking to your hands now when you're doing all this now right is it okay to let, let it sit or can you just knead right there, make the shape of the dumpling and fry or do you need to um, put things? It's in? not necessary to make it sit, but if you let it sit for maybe 15 minutes or so, the mm. dough should rise just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But typically, typically we don't let it sit, we just fry it. Right. And you don't need to, and if you do let it sit, do you need to put it in a fridge? Or no, you just leave it on the counter oh, with, uh, just okay. cover it with okay. a, a towel or some plastic wrap. Right. Okay, so now we see the consistency what we need. And we're getting to a point where we can start forming the dumplings. All right, so when you're kneading, are you feeling the hurt in your forearm? Depends on how, how much muscle you are and how... <laughs> because I need to know... You're putting in your... I need to know how much tightness in my mouth when I'm chewing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can tell. You really have to tell by the dough in your hand mm -hmm. how much kneading you need. Okay. To reach that consistency where you can form the dumplings. Okay. Now I'm just going to put some flour in my hands. To make it easier to see it's now it's easy to right. to break away and okay not to cling into my fingers all right all right so now we're going to make the dumplings and put them there all right so now you're portioning that now i'm portioning to... out according to how big you want the dumplings to be and then with each piece that you fold off you're going to use the turn and thumb method. Mm -hmm. So you turn it and you knead it into the thumb in the middle just to make sure that your dough is okay. So let me get in here formed. and learn this is I mean, to learn how to shape. So I pinched up enough in order to cover. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can feel so. the, the to get the, the consistency in your dumplings, you can feel how much dough you pinch off each time and just go there. And then you Kind of make it round, keep your shape. And you want a little dip in the middle because it will rise up. So how about this? So there is yeah. your perfectly formed dumpling. Boy, this will put mine to shame. You just flatten it out <laughs> a little bit because it will rise. I have, we're, we're still making the dumplings. So. I know. TV land, I'm learning how to knead dumpling and so make So we're dumpling. going to do the, the turn and thumb. Okay, got it. And you just, it's an extra knead into the piece that you are going to but I can make feel into the, a dumpling. I can feel the tightness in the dumpling now yes. as I do this. And then you kind of roll it to make it smooth. Get it as smooth as possible, roll it. And then you press it down. To, and then you just take your thumb Let's and shape it. shape it into the size that you want it. Ha! Look at that! 
<laughs> Compared to my first one? It's flatter. Flatter? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. It's going to, remember, it takes longer to cook. Oh. The thicker it is. Oh, okay. So as you can see, we made 22 dumplings from the five cups of flour. And of course, it depends all on the size of your dumplings. Now, these are not consistent in size, but, you know, if you only want a small piece and you can take a tiny one. <laughs> now we're going to move over to the frying pan to fry them. The test if your oil is hot, if you have a wooden handle spoon or thing to put it in. And if it bubbles, you know that your oil is hot enough. So it's bubbling. And then now it, your dumpling, as you put them in, the oil is very hot, so it will brown quickly. So when the oil is hot enough, you'll turn the temperature down to like medium and so that they won't brown too quickly and they have a chance to cook on the inside. Okay, so my pot fits nine of the dumplings. And you just let them cook in the oil until you have a nice golden brown consistency. All right, so when I put the oil inside the pot, you want it to cover it, the whole thing, or some people like the half the size of the dumpling? You're gonna flip it, because so. Because that seems to me like a lot of oil in there. Well, you're gonna flip it on the other side. So as long right. as the whole dumpling gets um, fried okay. and brown all around, you put enough oil that it will cover. Because sometimes in the, in the old time days, let's say my grandma put it on the side in the pot. That's like for this. really thick you know dumplings. What I mean? So okay. we made ours a little thinner. Okay. And this is the color that you're really looking for. Mm -hmm. Nice brown color, just flip them over. But that doesn't mean that it's actually cooked on the inside. No, right? I mean, you're cooking on the other side, we'll leave it in there. If you keep flipping it so it doesn't get too brown mm -hmm. until it cooks. And I usually, after I my dumplings reach the right color for me, mm -hmm. I put them in a toaster oven just to finish off. So in case the inside doesn't get cooked all the way, right? because I don't want it too brown, right? I put it in a toaster oven to finish off. So in a toaster oven on low, like about 250? Depends on how um, soon you want to eat it. If, okay. it's, if you're going to sit a while, put it on low so that it just continues warm and, and, mm -hmm. it, and it will finish. Um, so when you stick it now, like I mean, I see sometimes if you stick it in the middle with a fork, right? If it goes so, without, yeah. You can feel the lightness of the, when you stick it, uh -huh. you can feel the lightness of the dough on the inside. Oh, okay. So All you right. see that one is not finished. Right. So you want a little bit of resistance, but not no. like... No, it's not ready on that side. Okay. You just keep flipping them just to give them a chance to cook. Now, in some places, you know, like if like back in the day when I used to cook, you know, I had a deep fryer. So uh -huh. you put that in the deep fryer, you know, it floats, it's cooked. Yes. Right? Yeah. But in this case, because the pot is so shallow, oh, right. you can't get that. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, these can cook a little bit. This morning we woke up and we wanted to have a typical Jamaican breakfast. That's a real, well, is it really typical? It's, or is it just because of our family, this is what we like? It's a typical Sunday breakfast when the family really gets together, but the opportunity to sit down together and mm -hmm. eat. So we make ahi and sausage, so which is mean. a national dish of Jamaica. Okay. Now, ackee is rather expensive. You can buy it in the Jamaican stores. It's about $8 for a can, and, and we have about two cans in this. And you cook it up with salted codfish mm -hmm. and uh, onions and tomatoes and scallions. And, you know, for a little heat, we put our scotch bonnet. So some people decide to put uh, green peppers in there, like cut up green peppers it's, and things like that. It doesn't matter? It's fine. It's to your taste. Okay. And it adds color. So everything in this dish, except for the ackee, is not really like um, for Jamaica itself because codfish comes from, you know, somewhere else. The ackee grown in Jamaica, but it was from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So how does this become a national dish from Jamaica? I guess, but, uh, Or this was like, you know, like there are certain things that are considered like poor men's food, or you have um, things that people will say, like we eat uh, oxtail, 
or we will eat uh, tripe and cow food. So this was like for slave, or they would eat just to feed them? Because this doesn't seem like something that the masters would eat for themselves. I guess the, the forefathers thought it was a dish worthy of being identified as a national dish for Jamaica. Mm. Oh, it okay. was very popular. Mm. So to find out if your dumpling is finished, we stick it. You can feel the fluffiness of the flour, or whether it's tight on the inside, it needs a little more. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I finished mine off in the toaster oven. That will get the finish, the doneness on the inside. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, and now I, I feel the inside, the flour. Yeah, it's a little, like, yeah. Right. It's so I feel a little, little resistance. Yeah, so when it's totally done, you it'll go right through and come out. Just like I guess when a cake is done. Oh. So now our dumplings are all fried and we have brought in all the rest of the, uh, the breakfast yes, the breakfast compliments. items. Uh, now we have um, of avocado, course avocado, plantains, ackee and saltfish, breadfruit, dumplings that I've learned to fry today and make from scratch, mangoes and blueberries, and also watermelon. So, typical Jamaican breakfast. Come to the islands. So, as Felipe Blanco, tribute and homage. Perfect. <laughs> so, and that's it for Goodbye now. Goodbye from Sybil's Kitchen. This is Grace. Awesome. And Juju, we'll see you next time from Sybil's Kitchen, live.